Hello, and welcome to Extraordinary Chats with Preza Fundant and T-Rex. I'm T-Rex, and we're about to call Preza Fundant. So, I should have had this ready. Hello, hello. How are you doing, citizen? Pretty good. How about yourself? All right. You know, uh, last week was a bit of a bit of a dumpster fire, but uh, you know, I pulled through. Holy shit! You are not joking. I- anybody calling fucking that shit mild is fucking out of their mind. If that's well, I mean, about. well, yeah, yeah. COVID. I got. I guess we could jump right into it. I. I had COVID last week, but I didn't even know until I was better. They, they like tested me when my temperature was normal and it lasted a couple days. I mean, I guess for me, it was somewhat mild, but I felt totally horrible. Like, I guess, you know, I mean, I, it was similar to the cold. You know, I don't, I don't know if it made me feel better or worse um, than the common cold, but um, I, I would like to say that it made me feel worse, but I was over it after a couple of days. However, my joints and my body were like still punishing me for a couple of days after. So it's been about a week since my joints stopped aching. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's different for everyone. I'm not trying to downplay this or anything. Yeah. Like, I feel like you know, I, I, I understand. I feel like I had similar, but the opposite. Like, uh, Okay, so I hung out with my daughter who basically I found out she had it and then that's where I got it. But uh I worked out and then the next day I was really sore. I was like, "Man, I've never been this sore from working out before." I just I must have overdid it cuz it had been like a couple weeks since I had worked out. I was like, "Man, I don't ever remember feeling this bad." And then the next day, my muscle cramps were so bad I couldn't even like pick up a gallon of milk. Like it, like it hurt yeah. so bad. I literally spent hours. Um, my girlfriend just recently got a uh, one of those massagers, and so I just basically was holding it on my elbows, like the inner elbows, for like twenty minutes at a time. And uh, I was like, well, you know, I just chalk it up to that. And then my daughter, you know, notified us she had COVID. I was like, oh, well, that must be it. So we got tests for ourselves, and they were. You know what I mean? And it says it could take up to 10 minutes for it to show up, dude. As soon as we dropped that little dropper on there, it was instant. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what? Was, you guys, you got a 10 minute test? Yeah, it was, uh, they had them at like Walgreens or something. They were like 10 bucks a piece. But, uh, oh, okay. They're the rapid test. But then my girlfriend, since that, since she works at the hospital, she was like, well, I don't want to get anybody sick. And she already had a doctor's appointment scheduled for the day after so uh she went there and got retested and they told her she was definitely uh covid positive and they they shipped her out the back door didn't give her no paperwork or nothing they walked in was like all right come with us and then basically walked her out the back door but uh and then she got like a week off from work or five days off from work or whatever was it a paid week off uh well she normally only works three days she works three twelves so uh, a few of those already overlapped, and then she just used one of her ETAs or whatever to earn time yeah, off. But that's, that's so fucked up. That's so fucked up because cops, cops like fucking like murder citizens, rightfully or wrongfully, and they get like paid, you know, time off. She you makes, know, but like you know, she makes nurses, about twenty grand you know, less than a cool. cop too. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, and I, I value your wife more, you know, as a hospital healthcare worker than I do cops. Yeah, it's, no, it's no crazy to me. To any if, of those if, it up, if it was up to me, uh, cops would get better training. They, cops would get as much training as she had to go through. She had to get three years of college in before she could fucking even try do the trial well she didn't get like six months at the medical academy yeah 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 in a fucking bunk bed with her homie and fucking not really doing shit eating donuts and watching cartoons yeah that's exactly it (laughs) no she she fucking actually she went to school with a broken back she had literally had back surgery six days before she started school and oh wow uh, she basically sat on the couch and did all her homework for like the next 90 days or however long it took her for to heal and and she was on to trials and doing all that stuff. And she well, according to Dark Knight Rises, you just need to get punched in the back and be strung up on some rope, and like five months, and your back will be all right. 
Right. right? Is right. that how that works? Actually, she ended up having oh. a second surgery. But that's besides the point. Uh, well, what I'm saying is she worked her fucking ass off to get where she is. And I'm super proud of her for it. But yeah, she definitely doesn't make the money that she should be making in the field. That she, she's held yeah, she, brains she's, and hearts in her hand. and She's so she, deserving of so much <laughs> more, you know. And it's just so sad how we treat all these essential workers, you know, from from the hospital workers to the grocery store workers, you know, like remember like two years ago, that bullshit, you know, like, Oh, essential workers. We care about you so much. And now it's like fucking crickets. Like, Oh yeah. It's, well, it's the time, you know, it's kind of a virtue signal. Like, Oh, we got to help these certain people out. Well, what about all the people that were hurting before this shit happened? You know, or, well, you know, fuck those people. We just need to focus on the newly hurt people. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's so psychopathic, like our, our political leaders. It's, uh, it's, uh, it would be a joke if it wasn't so depressing. Yeah. And I wasn't trying to say that police shouldn't make a decent living. Everybody should make more than they're actually making now because of the, you know, the way that our fucking economy has basically been crashing our entire lives. So, I mean, teachers don't make shit. Uh, hospital workers don't really make shit. I mean, nurses, for some some of them really actually do make some money but i mean the difference between my girlfriend and a nurse uh she could do their job but they couldn't do her job so figure that fucking shit out you know what i mean like she has the authority to be able to uh, distribute medication and take vitals and transfer a patient which is basically what nurses do not saying they don't do much more than that but uh do you think a nurse could just walk in on an operation and know what instruments the surgeon is going to be needing and shit like that? You know, no, it's not going to happen like that. Uh, just like, you know, someone who's never welded could just walk up and do my old job, you know, which happened quite often. People be like, oh, well, let me do it. I could do it. And they get in there and two minutes later, they're freaking out and screaming and fucking wishing they were, you know, had chosen a different career path and i'm saying oh, it's not that fucking easy is it and you make three times more than i do and you fucking sit at a desk you bitch you know so yeah it's i so, think i deserve so a raise <laughs> what's that it's so stacked and it's like against like actual working people like the lazier you are the more it seems you have well like from elon musk to like jeff bezos and like all like like the only people making out of, of, of this horrible economy which they're pretending is you know all fine and dandy but uh is, are the elite and the uh you know shitty psychopathic political leaders yeah. you know it's upper and middle management too man it's crazy like my uh when i was a welder speaking of uh the the guy that was our supervisor was literally incapable of doing the jobs that we were doing, but he was really good at sitting in a truck and listening for someone to yell at him on the radio. So while we're in the vessel uh, doing all the work, he's texting his girlfriend and looking up videos and pictures of motorcycles and uh smoking in the truck and doing stuff like basically doing shit that we're not allowed to do on the property of the factory in the first place except for that's literally his job and he gets paid 90 bucks an hour for that and it's like wait i'm getting paid 30 bucks an hour and i'm on overtime and i'm inside with 2300 degrees between my hands what the fuck is really going on you know what i mean i'm like literally inside of a uh nuclear reactor welding yeah <laughs> and this motherfucker sitting in a truck making triple what i make like what the fuck yeah that's it's, that's so fucked up it's like it's just like it, it, it's it's these psychopaths that have perpetuated the shitty system and then they breed and then they pass along their psychopath traits to their offspring you know and then uh and it's it's really like america is a very psychopathic kind of nation you know we love to hate we love to punch down we just do all these really fucked up things and it doesn't need to be that way but you know it's just you we got born into it you know and i, I and i'm kind of pissed off about it i want to do something about it like hey let's let's put us on a proper path like in the very least i could decriminalize fucking like weed you know and i think that will have a nice 
reverberating kind of effect where if people could access weed in every state, you know, that kind of helps with the healing and toning all this hate down a little bit, you know, just the simple act of allowing people in every state to just smoke weed. Yeah, just, you know, to, and that's why just they, in the state they, they, that they you, keep it illegal. Oh, yeah. Just in the state that you live in, as soon as they did that, look at how much more tax revenue they had and how they were able to, you know, uh, fill out social programs and shit because of it. And I'm not saying that it's well, like and the also all use that as an excuse. Use that as an excuse to be like, look, we got all this extra revenue so we could give like businesses like tax breaks now. Yeah, that you know, stupid. And it's like, no, I'm not saying that that should have continued. What they should have done is they should have continued it the way that it was before that you know but the, actually part yeah. of that is uh i know that our state my illinois state government says in their constitution if if taxpayers pay a certain amount of taxes uh over uh, you know over the budget then a hundred percent of that money has to be paid back to the citizens somehow and really the only the easiest way to do that is to fatten up everybody's tax return which is what they're really supposed to be doing. Yeah, well, I mean, give that to the working middle class and poor, but not the rich, because the rich just keep on getting richer. Like, you know, the system is so fucked up, just what I'm seeing and hearing. And uh, it's just like, like, you know, and these, these con artists like Elon Musk, like fucking just make out like bandits. And I can't believe like, like NASA's really like working on, I think the this uh, I could be screwing up the name of the spaceship, but the this Orion uh, mission or spacecraft uh, to go to Mars, and it's like if, if there was one thing I think Trump mentioned it, like and credit to where credit is due, I think it makes more logical sense to kind of practice making a base on the moon. Because we could at least, you know, there, there'll be a few day, you know, like if they, if uh, an emergency arises, we could get help to them in a few days. Yeah. But if an emergency arises on Mars, we, it's like, depending on where the it's orbit is. It's a one is, year round trip type shit. Yeah. Six months to uh, two years, depending on, right. you know, where, where the orbits are, you know. And, and so that just is so stupid. It's like we should practice on the moon. But whatever. Well, I mean, yeah, do that, I know? that does make logical sense. It's a lot less money, a lot less work. Uh, you know, it's a lot easier more convenient. to rescue. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's safer in a lot of ways. So that does make sense. Uh, I feel like, though, that we really have a lot of shit going on on Earth right now that we really need to take care of kind of first well, yeah i know we we obviously have the technology to get to the moon and granted they used analog technology and they fucking graphed everything out on paper back in the day to get through you know and radiation bullshit <laughs> right so yeah so if they could do that with chalkboards and shit like that back in the day then we can obviously do that now it's just we have uh digital equipment which is more susceptible to radiation and uh can be Solar players. Yeah, it can be fucked stuff. with because of certain radio frequencies and blah blah blah. So as soon well, it's as, not soon that. As, it, it, you know what it is? It, it is we're not like you know trying to compete. You know with uh, like Russia or whatever. Yeah, there's no real space the, race anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is, but you know. not. It's more of a space race between the billionaires for. I, th I think it has a lot more to do with uh, communication, like telecommunications, like uh, the Starlink shit and shit like that. Oh, God, has... that is such a stupid idea. Well, Did you see Thunderfoot's breakdown of Starlink? Uh, well, there's certain aspects of it that are positive, but with the amount of satellites that it's going to take for it to work, it's basically cluttering up space and the atmosphere, and it's going to make it harder and harder and to astronomers. And yeah, and astronomers are having issues seeing what they need to see because of all the obstructions and extra light and all that shit. So yeah, I, I get that. No, it, it really is a stupid idea because like like Elon sells the idea like oh we just, like 
we just need users all across the planet and this is going to work out perfectly well two-thirds of the fucking planet a little bit more is water the and nobody's living there the reason why he can sell that to people is because people want convenience they don't give a fuck how it inconveniences others they want convenience for themselves which is why people vote against their own priorities because they think well this one little thing will help me out but then they fuck themselves in the long run which they don't even think about because they don't know to think about it because they weren't taught how to think they were told what to think you know what i'm saying so that's kind of how yeah. easy it is for him he's telling them what to think and they're thinking well that's a great idea because it gives them something that they want which is convenience oh we can have internet in our palm of our hand without having to have a box at home or something like that well that sounds amazing i want that how cheap is it oh it's cheaper than the regular stuff well now i want it even more well now that gives him no reason to stop what he's doing even though well, they're technical things that he could be fucking up in the long run it's not cheaper than the other stuff i know it's sold as like oh this is going to be so cheap just like the fucking hyperloop well, was going just, to be like I'm a just saying, hy- ride. i'm just saying hypothetically even if that were true whether it is or not i'm just saying that he could sell them on that and oh yeah the convenience so factor, the pay the pay doesn't mean shit to them because they're going to make millions and billions of dollars any fucking way from the population so he's selling it to people who are selling it to us he's not selling it to us because if honestly if people were smart which they really aren't but most people are they like i said they want convenience so they're gonna the people who he's selling it to are gonna sell it to us the same exact fucking way he's selling it to them oh it's convenient it's cheaper it's easier it's you know blah 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 whatever the fuck it is and they're gonna they're gonna shove it down our throats and we're just gonna take it you know what i mean and then not me it, well i'm just saying like the general population uh oh yeah i know yeah it, most people don't fucking think about what the what's gonna happen 10 or 20 years from now like yeah maybe when these uh covid vaccines came out people were like well, what's gonna happen 10 or 20 years from now well it's a little bit different when it's a health situation where it's like you could take this or you could fucking die as opposed to uh we could just clutter up the fucking sky with a bunch of fucking junk compared to what you know what we already have up there now granted if the technology itself is you know better in in ways right it sounds like uh this is baby steps let's let's take a step and let's get you know get everything in motion but if they know in the long run it's just going to be a thousand fucking satellites up there or, you know ten thousand more satellites than there are, or whatever yeah then that's probably not the best route to go about it but but it's going to make some dude like a small group of people a lot of money right exactly it's going to make 10 little companies fucking billions of dollars and their employees are going to make a living and they're going to get by so they're going to be fine with it because you know they're getting a paycheck out of it and you know eight or ten little companies are making billions and billions of dollars and a few families out of that fucking you know are wealthy beyond belief but whereas fucking the rest of the population is basically just struggling to get by <laughs> but we yeah, got no, fucking internet like, on our phone and we don't even have to be at the house yay yeah yeah well we, we could be in the middle of the ocean and get internet you know like hey you know and i guess that's good but you know what like going jumping into the like the molten salt thorium reactors they actually had a prototype, a working prototype plane that could fly on nuclear power, and you could, you, you we could design like planes that could Relay fly satellites. for days or yeah. weeks. Yeah, yeah, to act like satellites, but the, and they'll be closer, a quicker response time, and we could chart out paths so they're not obstructing astronomers and shit. You know, like. Like there's there's like tens of thousands of flights all across the globe a day. I think we can manage, you know, pro- probably a few hundred, and and they could go across the ocean in case there's someone in an emergency situation that's able to access this internet. Yeah, but they could to have a satellite. They could be like sent under- to certain areas or something. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I mean, they they could cover areas where there really isn't, you know, yeah, that's what I was much saying. of an incentive sent to the you know, sponsor to, to do it. It it doesn't need to be a for profit thing. It could just be like like what if someone's stranded in the middle of the ocean and they happen to have like a waterproof emergency device, like a phone or something, and uh, they're able to have their phone and have a little bit of power and call for help. So wait, wait, wait. You know? You're saying you you want to help people, but you don't want to make money off of it? What kind of plan is that? Oh, son of a bitch. I'm, I know. I need to change this behavior of mine. It's like, it's just like the stuff I'm going through, like, uh, like voodoo and everything. It's like, they never explain, like, my behavior, what I did wrong, go into detail. They just made some shit up about me and, like, use that to, like, ban me. But, uh, like, I could go into great detail of what they're doing, what they've been doing, and and all the things they've done wrong like some of their fans are sending people to my house you know probably on a fake profile some chick some you know just search the internet for some pics make a fake profile and give my address out as as yours for a good you know, time call um, type I'm, of shit yeah yeah it's more like a harassment type thing it's yeah, yeah. kind of along the same category of swatting but not as severe right but sending people to my house like, and one dude tried entering my home. Like, I wasn't, I was either deep, deeply asleep or I wasn't at the house at the time. But a, a neighbor's guest informed me about this and it happened in like early, mid-December. And uh, yeah, there was strangers coming to my house looking for a chick. And that just like, it's like, hmm, I'm starting to feud with the local sex club. And then... A few weeks later, some random people are showing up looking for a chick, and one of them's trying to enter my home. And 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 you know, like the the trolls on the internet, the bullies and abusers, they will they'll they'll be like, let's play a rape game. You know, you come into my house and rape me, and that's a way to kind of harass someone. Um, and and I suspect that's what ha happened, or that's what was said. Yeah, Unfortunately, I never ran into these people. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I dude. never ran. I never ran into these people. Otherwise, I would have asked them which social media sites they got their information from. So I need a. I, I got four social media sites in mind, from Plenty of Fish to Kick to Fat Life and Facebook or Meta, and see if anyone's been giving my address out from November. Uh, that's illegal. That's illegal as a motherfucker. That's some crazy harassment. I, man, I could see, yeah. like, if I were pissed at you, I might sit outside your fucking house and watch you come and go, maybe just to fuck with you or something. But if I'm sending people to your house, that is so fucking insane. Like, yeah. Holy fuck. And, and, and the community is like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you, whatever. Like, it, it's like, dude, I'm just bitching about the stuff they're doing to me. They filed a bullshit restraining. They, they first banned me for some bullshit, so I start protesting. Then to stop my protesting, they file some uh, bullshit with a bunch of lies in it. And then people are getting sent to my house and everything. And I'm just like, I'm just like bitching, you know, it's kind of like my protest, uh, but I'm not going to be done wrong in silence. I'm just... Like, I'm not going to be done wrong in silence. I'm going to fucking shout, just, and I'm going to complain about this. And if people don't give a fuck, that shows, like, even more, like, how fucked up just the like, Colorado Springs or the Colorado team community is. Here it is, it's Like, though. look, they, 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 they fucking... They do give a fuck. It's, they're scared that their fucking community center is going to be taken from them. That's what it really is. Oh, no, this guy's causing a fuss, and... We're going to lose our fucking spot because the guy who owns it is a piece of fucking shit. Well, if we just pretend he's not a piece of shit, then we can keep our fucking club. You see what I'm saying? So maybe that like subconsciously yeah. or something even. I don't uh, They're very, very defensive. You know, it almost seems like a cult at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's that's I, all I can think of because uh, obviously it could be more than that. But to me, deep down, it sounds like anybody who's gonna be like oh well he is in the right they're obviously fucking delusional or they're just scared that they're gonna lose something that they like and they're willing to just fucking turn a blind eye you know what i'm saying and but what, yeah well it's I mean, like it, that it, whole you turned you turned they share the, orgasms you know, so, you know, they have to be right. Yes, yeah, it just it fucks me up when people are, when anybody does any kind of group, 
like turn has that mentality of well even though uh even though the guy that's running this shit is a piece of shit it's still it's still good for the community or whoever yes it may maybe but you can't have somebody that's just getting away with fucking harassment and all this other fucking crazy ass shit you know what i mean they still have to set an example be a fucking professional you know uh, well that's what i thought like I, act like it all but they don't even allow clarification or like they say that they claim untruly uh you know totally false that i make fun of sexual assault victims and it's like oh, well okay what exactly did i say and do i have the ability to say sorry or something or some forgiveness and it's like no it's because you called a single person or a couple people being stupid, stupid, and now they can extrapolate well, that. Well, since you called them stupid and they're part of our sex club community, you're calling our entire sex club community stupid, so therefore you don't belong. You see what I'm saying? So, But anybody yeah. who understands it in context would understand how ridiculous they're fucking being, you know? I mean, if you were honest, and, and if anyone was there on October 2nd during the BDSM 101 class, I did not make fun of sexual assault victims. Now, was there a bad joke? Maybe. I don't remember the entire thing. But I know I was stuttering, and the teacher jumped on me when I said the word stupid, so that's what I thought it was about. And I've given this so much thought, so much more thought than all these other people. Like, I think about this every day for, like, the past, you know, few months. And I've gone through the scenario in my head and I'm like, I can't really think of anything that I said that is along the lines what they claim that I said, you know, and it's like, you know, and it's got me to the point where I'm just going to start recording, you know, whenever I go, if I decide to dip my toes back in some other teen community and it's this big meetup or something at this business, I'm going to have to record audio. And I think that's fair because... You know, just to, like, like I'm not going to, like, I don't have malicious intent, but if someone's going to say that I made, if someone's going to make up something that I said, I, I want there to be proof. Right. You know, you want to like, protect no, yourself. No. Yeah. Yeah. I want to protect myself. Exactly. I've been through this so many times. This is like, like, I started the protest off, kind of recording myself, and they said in the restraining order that he's like... He's recording for nefarious purposes. It's like, man, you got fucking video cameras on your building. What do you have that for? Nefarious purposes? Fuck you. I, I have a body camera and shit so I can protect myself. And the same reason why you have your shit. Jesus Christ. Do they not understand that people can recognize editing nowadays? Which is basically what they're doing and they're trying to accuse you of it. They Basically, that's what it seems like the whole time. They do something well, I don't know and then accuse you of doing it. What's that? I don't know if they're editing anything, but no, no, like, like they, they, well, they're editing they said, what they happened said, like, through telling oh, yeah. people lies about what actually happened. That's a form oh, yeah, of yeah, editing. Yeah, that. That's what I was getting at. Like, uh, uh, not hypothetically, but you know, figuratively editing. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but I, I can't even have the ability to like contact any of the people that might have been there on the second uh, of October for that BDSM 101 class because, I mean, they have all the information on all these members and everything and 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 people, but I, I don't. But if there was anyone, like, objective and honest, I didn't do that shit. Right. You know, like, like I straight up didn't do that shit. Was I acting weird? Was I bouncing around? Was I playing with a pen? Did I make some jokes? Were some of them good? Were some of them bad? Sure. All that. But did I, I didn't make fun of sexual assault victims. You know, and I'm sorry I'm not a perfect person, you know, like, like, if they said that day that we could not talk or play with anyone we don't want to. So I'm thinking in my mind, like, you know, okay, so you're giving us the freedom to fuck anybody off, which is cool. And, and, and my definition of fucking off is just like how I kind of grew up on it. It's like, it's like, like I have a conversation with somebody or, or I tell them, hey, fuck off. And I mean, like, like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to deal with you. When I was in jail, I heard a different version of fucking off, and that means like beating somebody up or whatever, and that's not, you know, the term that I grew up understanding. Yeah, to so me, when I hear me, fucking fuck off, off I just hear kick rocks, bitch, because I don't want nothing to do with you, or I'm heading out. See you later. Exactly. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, yeah. So, so I, none of this violent bullshit is not what I'm, you know, intending when, when I say fuck off. But they're, they're like, yeah, you could fuck off anybody. So I'm like, and I kind of given it much thought over a month. It, it was uh, from October 2nd to November 14th when I decided the day before the new member orientation, I'm like, look, this, this teacher did me wrong. And I'm just, there's no remedy really for the situation. So I'm just going to label him an asshole and not want to have anything to do with him. And then they're like, no, you're not welcome. You make fun of sexual assault victims. And I'm like, whoa, this is like such bullshit. Like, fuck you. I'm going to protest. And, you know, to repeat, you know, I started protesting them. And within six days from November 14th to November 20th, they had issued uh, a false restraining order against me by November 21st you know and and yeah it's just a bunch of bunch of stupid stuff you know it's really petty I thought I'd like to reach out to people and I'm like hey I, I noticed you're a fan of voodoo leatherworks but you know I'm kind of feuding with them and everything but that doesn't mean we can't be friends you know and they're like no it it, it doesn't mean we can't be friends you know like like you know, we can't be friends at all. Fuck you, you know. And it's like, what? What the fuck's going on? And and, and they're like, if they banned you, they banned you for a good reason. You know, and it's like, uh, are, are you sure? You know, like, you know, and I just, See, they're that, very shallow. They're very short. That's and what they, makes they're not me, willing to. That's what really makes me think that that's what's going on with a lot of them is that they're literally scared that you're going to taint the community because you've been, uh, you've been branded as a, troublemaker or whatever the fuck it is you know what i mean so i don't know i've never gotten that mentality it's like dude i, I it's like I a get, tattletale get, mentality like, or fucking tell on your neighbors because they're fucking smoking weed or something like you know what i mean it's like weird well it, it's shit. just it's just we're loyal we're loyal to this it's kind of like what trump asked for during his presidency a whole lot he's like i just want loyalty i don't care if i'm right or wrong i want your loyalty and it's like the same sort of mindset i think that's more accurate you know like just this blind loyalty and it's like i mean maybe there could have been a remedy for the situation but i really don't feel uh right uh, especially, you know, after the dude tried having me arrested on December 5th or 6th, I forget it was a Monday. And, um, and, and so now I feel really sore about that, you know, about, uh, you know, like the dude trying to have me arrested for blogging about, you know, the abuse of that they're, they're actively doing to me. And then to just try to escalate it like that, to abuse me further, to throw me in jail for what? You know, like, like, like bitching about this stuff, you know, like, like, like being honest about it and open and going into great fucking detail. It, it is so infuriating. And I rejected your idea at first, but like filing a restraining order against them. But now I'm all in and that's what all these subpoenas are about. Um, cause I'm going to have some ammo, you know, to, I'm going to, I, I could, I could undo his fucking restraining order pretty much at any time, but I'm using the time of the court to get subpoenas and to develop a case against him. So I could decimate his false restraining order and then get a legitimate restraining order against him, right. uh, the owner of the club. Really though. And I, I don't really call it like retaliation. It's more of a, I don't know. Like making well, the situation tried legitimate. Me. He tried having me arrested, so now I'm fucking like hardcore mode activated, bitch. You know, like yeah, that's I will fucking uh, fighting words, I'm, man. <laughs> You're, he's yeah, trying to take away your fucking freedom. That's literally, you know what I mean? Like that's a form of swatting someone. Like you said, that to me, that's like that's fucked well, that's up. Violence. Yeah, that's a form of violence upon me, and like that, like coming from a community where like, oh, we care about the abuse like the sexually abused but like we don't understand anything if it doesn't involve the genitalia you know and 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 some of these patrons that go to fucking voodoo leatherworks probably have had like messy divorces or fucked up relationships where the, they're being abused and their abuser does exactly what this owner did to me with this false restraining order and then he tried to have me jailed and it's like whoa like you're you're you, you know I really, like, after ha wanting to have me jailed and bring violence upon me like that and take my freedom away, I am definitely 
more interested in your suggestion that you, you suggested to me like a month and a half ago or so. Like, you know, getting a r- restraining order against him. And even the court clerk, when I was looking to do subpoenas, you know, and I explained the situation, sort of, I'm like, yeah, they just filed a false restraining order against me. I'm sure you never heard of it. I was being sarcastic, you know, and, and they're like, oh, well, we could get some paperwork. You know, we could, we could file a restraining order against them. And I'm like, no, no, no. Let me wait until I get some truth on my side first. Then I'll file it, you know. Um, yeah, you know, so because he tried, ac- I, I suspect he tried accessing my account. A day before the, my last protest, my second protest was November twentieth. I was there till about eight thirty at night. I didn't get home till a little after nine. But uh, someone tried accessing my media fire account on November twentieth, around six twenty p.m. So I was at the protest, and I assure you, I didn't use my phone to try logging in to my own account. So I'm trying to figure out who this is, and uh, I'm still waiting for. Media fire to reply it again to me. They got back to me a couple of days ago, and so I'm just kind of waiting for them to, you know, toss me some IP addresses or whatever, and then I'm going to have to subpoena that, you know, internet service provider to figure out who, you know, what address, what physical address is this, and if it's his house or his business or his cell phone or anything like that, then I think that looks really damning uh, for him. Dude, that's going to be such a slap in the face when if you guys end up in court together and you slap that on him. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, he knows it's coming. I've been like making screenshots and everything. Like, who uh, tried logging okay. into my account? And I posted it like a month ago. So, uh, you know, he kind of... Well, right. it'll still be a slap in the face. Well, what I'm saying like, is you know, most saying, people <laughs> don't realize it's that easy to fucking get the information you need you know what i'm saying like there's even sites that you can go on that and pay five or ten bucks maybe 15 20 bucks and get the information you need you know so you'll 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 get it figured out and when it comes down to it if it is him or someone that like one of his little underlings or whatever yeah they'll they'll get found out them lawyers are fucking smart motherfuckers they'll they'll put all the dots together you're already got I'm most not, I, of it. I don't, What's that? I don't have I don't have no lawyers. It's well, just I'm just saying we're going solo at it. I'm just saying, which if, I'm surprised about. Like you know, like like I was expecting like a team of like twenty fucking like like witnesses willing to lie on behalf of this dude. But I guess props to the community. But still, their silence is very deafening. Yeah, I only I only had bad, one almost. nice conversation. And it seemed like they were fishing for information if I knew that horse boy's name uh, or not, you know, because they were kind of inquisitive about that. And they were coming at me kind of nice and everything. I, I, the whole thing was nice and respectful and adult like. But I, uh, and that was only, like, it was like a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago. And that was the only nice conversation I have, but I suspect it was fishing for information whether I had this person's name or not, which I'm kind of distracted from horse boy, whatever that could be his name forever, you know, to me, because now like, cause me and horse boys beef, which I was just going to label him an asshole. And he was the teacher at that class on October 2nd, 2021. Um, but like, like this other dude was like, Oh, oh, you did him wrong? Here, hold my beer. Let me, you know, fucking escalate this shit, like, way, way more than it needed to be, you know? Like, I mean, I don't know what the dude was trying to accomplish, but it just, like, it just seems that I'm still going to be able to protest anyway, but now he set uh, set it up so I could sue him for defamation. And then, uh... And, and then I could get a restraining order filed against him, like a legit one. Right. You know, so it's like you, you, your, your posturing really sucks. Um, I really feel you know. like this has happened before with him and it's worked a lot and he thinks that he's getting away with something and that he thinks that, I mean, 99% of people are the type that just fucking, when they get slapped down, they just stay down. You know what I'm saying? Well, that yeah. fucking sucked. I'm not going to try that again. But eventually doing, he's going to come across someone like me and do. you who's like, man, I ain't going to take this bullshit. I'm going to show these motherfuckers what's up, you know, and yeah. you don't really understand what he's dealing with. And 
it's going to fucking backfire horribly for him. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I hope so. That's the that's the plan. I want to be able to. I, I at least want to kick him out of one event, just once. I want to have my uh, cardboard cutout. I haven't really talked about my fun ideas that I've been coming up with, but I, I want to get a cardboard cutout of the dude. So when I'm at my protests and whatnot, I can, you know, uh, you know that Dirty Dancing movie that uh, that one popular song from it. Uh, I, uh, the time of my life. Yeah. And I owe it all to you. Yeah, that that song, and I could play that song on my protest on my portable speaker, and I could lift him up like in the movie above my head <laughs> and everything. I thinking about having his arms move so I could point them forward like Superman pose. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, so uh, and then I was thinking I could take that idea further, and then I could go on like dates with him, you know, and record it and kind of <laughs> edit it and have a little fun. I look a little crazy, but you, 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 you know, for those objective viewers that, you know, I'm obviously just fucking around and having some fucking fun, you know, um, it's my way of turning people's hate into rainbows. I do weird shit like that, you know, and, and, uh, well, it's all, and then I have the shaming bell, shaming bell from Game of Thrones. Oh yeah. I just, I, I got it. It's ready. It's ready to go here. Listen, holy that was just a tiny, tiny little ring, too. Yeah, people aren't going to not hear that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll do it at acceptable hours. I figure after 8 o'clock, I'll, I'll cut out the noise and everything and turn my music down. Yeah, I just, I think that, uh, I think that if you continue protesting, like you say, like you're doing, and uh, giving them the what for, they'll either realize that you're not going to go away and the situation that they fucking made a huge mistake and uh they're either going to learn from this shit or it's going to it's just going to continue on until they're you know what what could possibly happen like what's what's the biggest thing that could happen the community could turn on him and he could lose his fucking business no they want to do that but you, you know like if anything, I just hope they learn, you know, and proceed more with caution and people are able to question even their beloved sex club owners that they've been friends with since 2013 or whatever the fuck, you know. Um, I, I, I hope it's a learning experience for some people and, you know, like, like I, I just... The, uh, Okay, so I just recently got banned from a group on Fet Life. It was called Colorado Springs Trans Personals. And the owner was in service of Voodoo Gallery, which is the name they go by on Fet Life. Um, and and it's just like they just arbitrarily banned me. Like, oh no, you shouldn't have a chance to meet a trans person at all. You're not, you know, welcome in this group because you're complaining about being abused by the local sex club I'm in service of. So fuck you. And it's this child, very childish behavior. You know, I thought I could come still be friends with people that are fans of voodoo. It's like, look, we have this one disagreement, but we could still, you know, like meet up outside of voodoo and, you know, be friends and be nice to each other. And it's like, no, no, I'm an adult. So therefore, bleh. You know, it's, it's just so, it just blows my mind. I don't know. They And they don't ever explain my bad behavior except that one vague, you know, I make fun of sexual assault victims. Well, well, what was the scenario somewhat like? You know, you don't, I, I know, you know, thinking of it verbatim is difficult, but, you know, yeah, tell, general, tell me exactly what I did, you know, like just, general, yeah, not exactly, but yeah, just kind of generalize like what I did and not too general, like you make fun of sexual assault victims. Like, right. what? Was this in the beginning of the class? Was this at, towards the end of the class? When the fuck was this? Because I really don't recall that and that's not my personality. And, you know, not not to say I do make, it, it can get confusing and context matters, but I may make fun of somebody, anybody, and they could be a victim of sexual assault, but it's not for that reason. Right. You know, and it, it, if anything, like I, I was talking about Denise a few uh, chit chats ago with you, you know, and it's like she was able to forgive some rapists of hers and not forgive me for my horrid discretion of having a conversation with her in front of other people about a shitty bass bag of weed that she was 
given me, you know, or trying to give me, you know, and it's like, you know, like, so, so my, it's like, I, it's like I, I do things and my transgressions don't seem as severe as others, but my punishment is very severe. Like, it, I, I, I can correct that. myself from, from, from this, I make fun of sexual assault victims. I can't, I can't correct myself or even like, okay, you say that I did it and you prove it. You know, or, and I can't even can say you, sorry. Can you or, give me a chance to fucking apologize even, even if I did it or not? Yeah, yeah it's like, something. Oh God. And it's like, they don't give me a chance to apologize. So they force my hand and I start protesting. And then they fucking do all this abusive shit, which is just very ironic. Cause they're like, oh, we care so much about, you know, abuse and everything. But, but do you, do you? Because, you know, you seem really abusive to me and very hypocritical. Well, I've, I grew up with three sisters and, uh, my mom, she's fucking out of her mind. Oh, so, uh, it, it was it was kind of uh it was rough but the way that yeah. <laughs> the way that they argue wasn't like you know how you ever, you've heard they argue like a woman whatever well women have a way of arguing that can keep you on your toes and what it is is uh once once you once you kind of relieve a situation so say uh you're always out with your friends all the time. You never want to spend time with me. Well, I'm here now with you and you're starting a fight. So let's calm down. Let's just hang out and chill. And then, oh, now you're saying I'm being a certain way, you know, so now it's a, a new subject, but it's still the same fight. You see what I'm saying? And then it'll go into yeah. something else and something else, but you'll never get back to why the fight even started or why you're, you know what I'm saying? Like, can we at least work out the first thing and before we move on to the next 13 different things, which really don't matter in the long run. It's just you're trying to perpetuate a fight that you didn't realize that you were starting a fight and now you got into the fight and now you're upset and you don't want to give up because now you'll look stupid if you realize you started a fight for no reason. And that seems like what's kind of going on. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I feel like that's what I went through with my my little sisters and my big sisters. Fucking, they would misunderstand something, fucking have a big fucking hissy over it, and then three days later they're still upset about it. And it's like, what are you, what are you even talking about? Who even gives a fuck anymore? You know what I'm saying? Give it the fuck up, move yeah. on. But no, if they ever relent and say that they were wrong for starting that fight then that means they made a mistake and they have to admit to it and they have to change oh that, that would be very childish if they did that you know like i mean we wouldn't want them to be so childish and admit to mistakes and everything and and i have the ability to do that too like like i have the ability to be like oh damn i fucked up you know like but like i haven't done that yet with this situation and i don't think i'm ever going to i mean the possibility is out there you know, but uh, I think I'm totally justified. But, but to, to go on, just like you might want to mark this time right now. Uh, and, but I, I'll give you a thumbnail or a screenshot of like I, I got banned from this group. The, the owner of the group was in service of the fucking voodoo uh, leatherworks called voodoo underscore gallery on, on Set Life. And, um, and anyway, um, and, and so, like, you know, she didn't, like, message me or anything. She just arbitrarily decided, you know, like, I shouldn't have the chance to meet any trans person because reasons or whatever. And it's just like, like, they don't go into any explanation. Like, from the, from the original thing they made up about me, you know, they just maybe, kind of vague about it. Maybe someone then, recognized your profile somehow and reported you because they knew about the situation and that's what happened. I, well, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I remember uh, messaging her and it was a similar message like, hey, I know you're in service of Voodoo because I check out people's profiles before I message them, you know, and I'm like, you know, but we could still be friends, you know, and you know, I, I, that's kind of generally how I came at them, although it was probably a few paragraphs long. Um, but that's, you know, the a few messages that I've been sending out lately, you know, and it's like, 
and I, I didn't hear um, anything back. And after 24 hours, I usually stop unfollowing a group post or something. So after like 24, maybe 48 hours, I kind of just unfollow it because I'm tired of clicking on it and not seeing any replies, which is what I'm used to. You know, I, I get the exact opposite treatment of any female on any dating site. You know, it's like fucking crickets. I, uh, one dude messaging me, uh, harassing me um, uh, just recently, um, and he was like following me around all, all these social media sites. He makes up like one quarter or one fifth of all the messages I've got on that life. You know, but uh, but anyway, you know, so the um, you know, it's not really, you know, I'm not overwhelmed or anything with too many messages. Not that I want to be, but it would be nice if I had some decent, you know, conversations from time to time. Which is like, I'm so appreciative of you, T Rex, to chat with me from time to time because it, it, it does it, it does help out. You know, even with just like mental health issues, it's nice to just have a nice chat with someone that isn't fucking like doped out and acting like a monster or you know it's just it's just nice to have a nice conversation it's nice to be thought of like that and because normally that's who people think i fucking am (laughs) i'm not saying i'm like some psycho it's just i feel like uh when people talk about me to other people and i hear about it it's like who the fuck are they talking about you know like that guy scares me uh why i'm I've never even, like, never been in a real fight and fucking all this stuff. And, like, I'm not a violent person. The last thing I want to do is hurt somebody. I'm probably the first person to cry about some shit. And fucking, I'm a big scary monster to a lot of people. Oh, it's because I fucking don't take shit. Oh, when someone says something, I'm like, no, it fucking isn't. Or that's not the way shit is. Oh, that's why I'm a big scary monster because I don't just pretend fucking reality isn't what it is you know so i i i also appreciate being able to you know talk about stuff and uh have a decent conversation with somebody who's not out of their mind like i feel like most people are people get uh, offensive when you you know when you can agree with them on stuff and then when you disagree it's like the end of the fucking world like i it's like you just told them that you're gonna like fucking murder you know their kids or something yeah you know? it's, it's like, like what the hell is that? i'm not standing on your dog's head right now ready to crush his brains out i i was i was just not taking fucking your bullshit you know it's like geez. well that's that's like that's one thing with the president thing like the whole like hey i i i you know want to run for president i need some help training and some support and you know, interesting, good conversations is, you know, part of that. And um, that's why I was like, you know, um, well, it's all like so confusing to me. I got treated like shit at, at the atheist experience a long time ago, twice in a row. Like, I mean, it, I think it was, I, I tried contacting them once in 2012 and then another time in 2013. And they just treated me like shit when they treat other crazier people with more respect and then i bring it up to my family it, that's how this thing kind of all started off as a joke because my my family never really helped me with anything i guess they they helped me survive you know with food and everything but it was my father that was really the big supporter but then he was never around much and then i had a narcissistic bitch mother you know and, and, and anyway Dude, um, we had parallel and, and, and childhoods, I'm telling you, for real. I mean, it may not have been exactly the same, but very, very similar. I could have said the same words, and it would have meant the and, same And, and uh, like, like, my family attacked me, you know, granted, it, like, it wasn't over, like, the president thing. I had left, like, six or seven voicemails in a row, just kind of venting and getting shit off my chest. And I remember saying in there at least once, but probably multiple times, that... If you wanted to talk about any of these things, mom, you know, you know, I'm down. But instead of actually like talking about anything, she comes over and attacks me and then, you know, a- actively makes me homeless by abusing her power of attorney over my grandma. And it was just to, to get an order of protection against me because and then like a few months prior to that attack, I told my mom that I would kill myself if she made me homeless again. And what does she do after attacking me? Make me homeless because she got to. Oh man, my poor son, you know, like, 
he, he, he just killed himself and no, oh, feel sorry for me, feel sorry for me. And uh, anyway, I have and, a, and, and I have I, a and sister I, and who I, exactly like that, my middle sister. And it's not like I hate being the victim. I hate being the victim. I hate bitching about this shit. I wish I could fucking talk like not bitch. I could fucking brag about shit, you know? And, right. You who, know, but, who wants to disparage like their I, family? Right. You. You're, it's well, a, a venting process because it's hurtful. I mean, for a family to have yeah, done shit hurtful. like that, it's it's fucking. And it, it was such a betrayal. I don't know like who I could trust anymore after that. It's like, right. well, these people kind of like raised me and took care of me. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever have like a, a lengthy relationship like that ever in my life. And now, you know, every relationship in the future is going to be somewhat suspect. You know, I'm always going to wonder in the back of my mind you know just always wonder like you know what if well, what if some uh, betrayal comes along speaking of uh <laughs> when i was 15 me and my mom got in an argument over like not like i don't it's it was literally nothing because i can't even remember what it, if it was if it was like something that had a point i would definitely remember uh like when she kicked me out when i was 17 uh that was because I slept in on a Saturday. I slept past 7 a.m. on a Saturday, and she kicked me in the ass, and I grabbed the empty coffee mug off of the end table, and I threw it, and it hit a big front window, and it shattered the window. Oops. And I went to jail over that. But uh, Oh, shit. Yeah, so I spent two weeks in jail over that. But when I was 15, uh, she kicked me out over some whatever bullshit, and so I moved in with friends who were all a couple years older than me. They were all old enough to have an apartment. I was like a couple months from be turning 16. So it's the middle of the winter. Uh, I move in with them and uh, we end up getting in an argument because I call her a bitch. I'm like, I'm 15 and she kicked me out. She ain't a bitch, what? I didn't do anything, you know what I'm saying? Like she's not, she didn't try to support me. She wasn't trying to do anything. Uh, it probably could have been over me like saying hey I would I would like this for Christmas you're not getting shit you little ungrateful bastard and then kick me out or so it could have been something that little you know and uh, well, my mom always like you know like like when I'll change my tone of voice sometimes I get more or less excited you know when I'm talking and you probably experienced that a few times yeah. with me chatting with me just now I mean, everybody but, does. like whenever I'll change my tone of voice my mom would be like can't you talk normally? Like she would bring it up like a dozen times within like like two minutes, and it's like, look, this is just how I talk, and and I just learned the other day that that's like a really narcissist thing to yeah. do. Like narcissists can't handle that, and I my was like, oh shit, it shit. makes so much sense. My mom did yeah, the that, same. Yeah, that my thing. mom's a narcissist. Did did she have any hearing issues? Um, no. Okay, I was I was wondering about that because my mom had hearing issues, and if I raised my voice, she would like, crit, like, uh, shoulders shrink down, like, like I was attacking her, but I'm just like saying yeah. it loud enough for her to hear me, and then she'd be like, "You don't have to yell." I'm like, "But you just said speak up. You couldn't hear, you know." It was like whatever. But, yeah, uh, it's such a, and then it throws you off of what you're talking about. You're like trying to talk and have a conversation. And then, you know, the, the conversation is then, you know, just me and my tone and everything. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's just your ADHD son, Ma. Well, you know, I, I, I don't, like, that's also a good way to change the subject and make it so that you aren't telling her what she needs to hear. You see what I'm saying? So as soon as... Well, yeah, she, that's a narcissist thing to do, you know, to, to make it about them, you know, and that's the easy way to do that, you know, like, be like, oh, what? You know, sorry about my tone, Ma. I'll try to keep it, you know, just perfectly even all the time and display no emotion in my voice. Uh, yeah, know. I got treatment like that all the time. It was like uh, she would come yelling. She'd like literally burst through the door screaming at me. And I'd be like, why are you, you know, reacting to it? Yeah, and then she'd be like, why are you screaming at me? And then start slapping me. And it's like, wait. <laughs> You just literally verbally and physically attack me out of fucking nowhere. I'm going to defend myself, you know? Shit. Get the fuck out of yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. But, okay, so the we're, we're getting sidetracked a little bit. I was mentioning, like, how insane it was. Like, I just, how much hell I've received just wanting to run for president. 
you know, I get like the atheist experience and I'm just going to run through it all. Hopefully, you know, I'll remember everything. Um, then my family attacks me, you know, that uh, right before my family attacks me, I get sent to a mental hospital for just wanting to try to be president. Like I showed up to my doctor's office with cookies too, but I didn't think that was that big of an issue. I was just trying to be quirky and cute and you know, different. If you could ask me to use my phone and to get gum or a cigarette off me, why not bring along cookies with me was the thinking, you know, so then people could ask me for a fucking cookie too. And I was just trying to be creative, you know, anyway. Um, and then, then like I move out to Colorado, the, the, you know, this abusive couple moves in underneath me after I've been living there almost a year, you know, they were just like three months new. You know, and I get attacked by them and then the fucking, you know, the cops collectively do their job. I mentioned in jail after like many months, uh, this is kind of when the blood clot must have shifted and I was unable to walk on my leg because they had delayed. I was supposed to have trial that July or maybe June, but uh, they delayed it to October because I mentioned that I want to run for president as a statement of my character. And they're like, oh, we've well, we got to do a mental competency check on this guy, you know, because, you know, like, he says he wants to do it, well, he's a fucking crazy. You know, and it's just like, did this one hell, I mentioned it to the sex club even, like, you know, like, hey, I'm the one run for president, and I got to tell all story, and, you know, and, and this was before he started doing his extreme malicious shit against me, his abusive shit against me. And, you know, like, it, it's just amazing the reaction that I get from almost everyone. And it's like, and, and, and from every place, and it's like, look, I know I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm saying maybe tomorrow I could be perfect or as close to perfect as I can be, you know, given the proper help. I'm thinking about this very logically, and you know, I'm just raising my hand here saying, fuck it, I'll be the good choice. I will make some sacrifices and I will get shit done for the people. How much shit I could get done, you know, that's a question maybe time will tell. Um, I just want to do something instead of just bitching about it all the time and bitching that we don't have any good options. It's like, look, I'll be the good option, okay? Like, I'll do the shit, all right? You know, and it, it's not going to be no walk in the park either. That's and, it. and, like, I think people working, like, your wife is going to work way harder if... If I do win a presidential election, then I'm going to work. Like, there, there'll be some tough calls maybe to make, but uh, um, for the most part, I think it's going to be like, dude, if Donald Trump and George Bush could do this shit, and those guys were fucking doddering morons, man. Like, you know, they, I, I could do this job too, and I could probably do it better. Not to sound like a narcissist, but I really believe I could do things better. I can do things in a better way, and I just, uh, uh, anyway, you know, like, 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 I, I was, uh, okay, so, you know, the, I, I, you saw my early work with TJ, my early chat, right? and uh, you, you've probably seen the private one, I think I mentioned it, or this could have been a public idea, but inviting the spouse of my, America's political enemies to the White House to maybe just fuck with them a bit, like, like, I, I don't expect them to fulfill the invitation, but if they did, I would still like, like if it was some hot mama. A lot know, of them would show I, I, up I, I, just because it's an invitation to the White House. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. And I, I, you know, if they want to fucking, you know, have some consenting adult play, you know, that's, that's cool. You know, um, I'll do that. And, and I really want to have a first lady. So if, you know, like some dude needs to be entertained and. I want to have a promiscuous first lady. So as long as it's okay with her, though, she's, she's not property. I don't want to fucking, you know, have that kind of BDSM relationship. She's able to make her own choices, but, you know, she'd be willing to join in with me to, to fuck with the spouses. And I, I was like, I, I was kind of just staying out into the ether, you know, but I was talking about the, the owner of Voodoo Leatherworks. And I'm like, I could even asshole better than you can because I could go invite your wife so we could have an awesome conversation. And then maybe we could, you know, like, you know, have some, you know, con consent and I could fuck her brains out, you know, as well. 
you know, and, and there's, and I'm like, there's nothing illegal about anything I just said, but you yourself had a fucking, you know, go the illegal route and make up some stuff in a fucking restraining order to get me to stop my protest, to be like an asshole. So I'm just kind of like, I could even be a better asshole. It's kind of like where all that like leads to, led to there, you know, like I could even asshole better than you can. Well, and, and then the... You no, know, branching the, off the, I could probably president better than other previous presidents can too. Fuck, most people, I'm not saying that this isn't a dig at you, but I think most people can do better than, especially Trump and uh, Bush, because, like you said, they're fucking either they're super geniuses playing dumb fucks or they're just playing dumb fucks. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they're dumb fucks. Oh man, they are so dumb. <laughs> right. So, but even even Obama seems like a dumbass. But but like like he's just corrupt, you know. Yeah, although his team I, like stupidity, but he, he, he was well he, educated. And then he he just did, it, it was Bush two point and it was like oh oh great, you know. Yeah, that just like Biden right now. He's like Trump two point It's just like fuck. Yeah, you know, the, I'm tired of this shit. We we get Monster A, then we get Monster two point or Monster A two point you know, and it's like fucking shit. You know, like what's the difference? What's the point of voting? You know, it's so so rigged and so corrupt. It just blows my mind. I... Yeah, I get attacked from both directions, especially on Twitter, because I'll be like, "Fuck Joe Biden, he's a fucking worthless piece of shit." And then I'll then like all these Democrats will go on, like centrists and shit will go on there, be like, "He's the best choice we've had." Blah blah blah. I'm like, uh, we had plenty of other better choices. And then fucking, uh, then some Trump tart will come on there and be like, yeah, yeah. And backing me up I'm like, fuck Trump too. And then, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah, a fucking yeah. dumb fuck. He's even dumber. And, uh, then, you know, then, then I get like a thousand motherfuckers up my ass. It's like, Jesus Christ, look at you motherfuckers. And, and you, y'all calling me stupid. Just open your fucking eyes and see what the fuck's going on. It's fucking... Hey, if you ever need me to join in on one of those, you know, you could always at me. Uh, I, you know, and I'll, I'll have no, a little I, fun, it, I guess, you know. I have fun, any, regardless of how many people uh, jump on, I have a fucking blast with it. And a lot of times, it's it's like a, se uh, a cycle thing, you know what I mean? Like, one person will say something... I'll say something oh, that totally it, refutes like, yeah. it. And then another person will say the next thing. And it's like they know like the order of uh, it that it goes. And then that first thing will be repeated by someone else. And then someone else will jump in and throw in there that second point. And it's like it's it's just a cycle of BS. And you can just totally refute it within words. Sometimes I just play games and just troll them back. And it's just like... I can't tell if they're having fun with it or if they're just too stupid to understand it or probably too stupid, you know, I mean, we breed stupidity and hate in America. Yeah. And, and then eventually it'll come down to <laughs> you're just a fucking asshole. Dirt, 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 and it's like, no, you just, you, your virtues and your fucking values are horrible and I'm going to call them the fuck out. So if, if you're uh, trying to prop up some hateful bullshit, then I'm going to call you out for it. If you're fucking, you know, doing whatever, whatever right-leaning policy it may be, whether it's fucking uh, anti-gay marriage or fucking anti-trans fucking rights or whatever the fuck it be, I'm going to call it the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? I may not be completely yeah. comfortable with all of this shit, but that's just because well, I'm a prudish piece too, of shit. Too lost. But I'm still going to call you lost. out, you know? <laughs> What's that? Don't get too lost, like, taking craps in your hands and throwing it at each other, okay? Because, you know, there, there's a lot of that on Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, like, fucking the internet, you know? Um, well, yeah, yeah. I'm so just don't saying, get too, like... Don't too caught up in it. Uh, well, I... Yeah, I, I don't spend that much time on it. Uh, I, it's just, uh, uh, like, certain things, I don't know. I just can't let go. Like, if if someone's, well, someone's going to say, I would never hey, stop using uh, Twitter if I didn't stop on following all these people. Like, I, I would be so lost in Twitter for most of the day, every day. 
you know, it, it just like, you know, I had to, I had to unplug really because yeah, yeah, I could get so caught up in just all these chit chats and I was pro kink at pride and some people were calling me a pedo, you know, for fucking being pro kink at pride. And it's like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, yeah, but see, they're a like, bunch what? of fucking piece of shit assholes that don't really take in consideration the whole head. picture. Yeah, because one of them was Shuan Head that called me a pedo for being a fucking she's, uh, pro king at pride, and it's like, though. what the fuck is wrong with you? She's not. Re- she's just. Yeah, well, left I mean, that's what I hear about her. Right. I don't really no. watch her videos. I just hear her referenced a lot and everything, and it's like when it's I was like, oh, okay, you when, know, so this is someone. <laughs> when I was more politically aligned with her, I watched the shit out of her videos, and I was like, oh, she's she's pretty on the money with a lot of it and then i realized as i became more le- left well it's not that i became more left-leaning i realized i was more left-leaning than i thought i was i thought i was a centrist for like my whole adult because you're life. not a hypocrite and then i realized you know, wait you're, you're like a- I, I want there to be I want there to be compromise, but I want the compromise to end up making things happen. I don't want the compromise to be things that stop progress. I don't want those compromises to end up making things worse in the long run. So I realize I'm definitely not a centrist in those regards because I want actual progress. And then I realize I'm not just a liberal or progressive because there's a lot of things stacked up in uh, that term that I'm far left of. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, people are like, well, then maybe you're just a socialist. I'm left of socialism. Uh, so it's, I don't know. I feel like uh, all these, li- there's no real label for me in a certain group of people. Like, I guess we're just general generalized as leftists. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like there's certain things that, out there. I, I prefer the term progressive. Well, right, right. But I feel like that terminology has been taken over by Democrats who are oh, yeah. actually liberals. That well, I, need, are, I need to throw like a real progressive in front of it, you know. Unlike right. The real, yeah. If, if it was you know? real progressive, then yeah, I, that's what I would call myself. But real progressives are a separate group from what the what they call the progressives you know what i'm saying what they call themselves yeah because uh when i see most pro- you know air quotes call themselves progressives they're neoliberals so yeah so Shit, that's why i don't Jimmy call North myself Cone. a progressive even though that's literally what i would be called if if the term hadn't been taken over by you know fucking uh I'm drawing a blank. Right, the fake fucking, you know, um, you know, we're we're, we're for the working class. Vote blue. Well, I was going to say like conservative light or something like that, but there's another one. Yeah, that's exactly, I mean, that's what Democrats are. Like, I mean, they're they're, they're not even conservative light anymore. They're just conservative. While the the right wingers are extreme right wing, you know, it's like. Yeah, because of the ratchet. They're not even light anymore. Yeah, basically because of the I mean, they're doing everything that Trump did. But worse, you know, and it's like, like, like kids in cages. Well, you know, our side is in charge now, so it's okay. Well, just rename it. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. oh, know, it's like a vacation. Don't worry, guys. Yeah, see, that's that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about. Whenever I like, like I was saying, get on Twitter and it's I can say, panda. I can say, fuck, fuck the center and fuck the right, and then I, you know, get two groups of people coming at me, and it's just like. Well, uh, what are you guys trying to do to fix anything? Uh, the centrists aren't, and the right is trying to pull everything back to the right. They're trying to, and then like undo progression, right? And also add in a bunch of bullshit of like things that don't really even matter to anybody in the real long run. Yes, Christmas matters to manufacturers because. Uh, you know their workers need a paycheck and so they're going to make goods throughout the year and then when christmas comes around people buy the shit up and whatnot and that's good for sales but the actual holiday itself doesn't really do anything you know what i'm saying like yeah, not I mean, everybody what, actually they pay for christmas what i'm saying is how people celebrate christmas and how it it's it's more of a 
Hallmark holiday now. It's not a, it's less of a family get together and chill. It's more of a gift exchange type of thing, which. Yeah, it was well, a capitalist kind of, holiday, you know, like a day to celebrate, you know, the rich and, you know, consuming. Right. Um, so what my point is, is uh, it's, they'll use that as like a thing that's, that the left is trying to destroy or something like some weird bullshit like that, oh, like a war, like the war issue, on Christmas. Know? And it's like, no, yeah, these motherfuckers are celebrating the same shit the same way you are. It's just, you're, you just need fabricated. some kind of target to, yeah, exactly. A uh, fabricated well, it, target. It, well, to, it, it wastes people's time too. If you waste, if you waste, you know, two months, of uh, news coverage, like I, I, I mean, I know Fox News is all on that war on Christmas shit. So they have article and probably you know reports after reports every hour, you know, on on something that takes like two minutes, you know, maybe a minute and a half of runtime, and that all adds up to like time wasted. Yeah, you know, when... just jerk the people around, give mm-hmm. them a razzle dazzle. I like how Paul's ego referenced Chicago as a you know like a, a broader political example because that, that like i never had that thought until paul said it a few years ago when i was watching dfs and uh that was a really uh good insight because that they razzle dazzle you you know with nonsense and you know different groups of people need to be razzle dazzled by different things and you know the the conservatives eat up that war on christmas and the war on jesus and all sorts of shit you know they just fucking waste people's time you know? Right, but then when you say, "Well, what about UBI and M4A and uh, college?" Uh, you know, at least like community college or higher education, free or affordable uh, college education, and investment. all this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Which would make our society better. No, no, no. I don't want none of that because that means I have to pay taxes. You're already paying taxes. They're already stealing it and fucking building tanks yeah. that aren't getting used. There's like 10,000 tanks well, in think, a graveyard that have never think, even been driven. And it's like, they what conflate, the fuck? They can play the progressive, like the real progressive tax plan to, you know, tax the, the wealthier more than the poor, you know, essentially. Um... They, 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 they've been taught that, you know, well, if you tax the rich person, that's, you know, they, it's going to translate to you, too. You know, and, and, and Bernie kind of said that a little bit because he was like, you know, like he was talking about, I think, Medicare for all during the campaign trail. And he's like, everyone will pay more in taxes, but you're not going to have these co-pays and you're going to spend thousands of dollars less than the little bit more in taxes you're going to be, you know, fucking forking over. And I actually think people understood that, but just the propaganda is so vast and they beat the drums endlessly, just like they're beating the drums like at Voodoo Leatherworks. They're like, Chris makes fun of sexual assault victims and just keep repeating that and then it becomes true, you know? And then, you know, like, they get me to repeat it. Like I just said a few times during this chit chat already. You know, like they get me to repeat it. Even it's very uh, effective. It's, it's like a lot of the world and the time it takes the truth to put on its shoes. Uh, no doubt. I had a I had a point on that, but I lost it. I'm fucking stoned out of my it's mind. All good. I, I'm so stoned. I'm sitting here eating peanut butter cups, trying to come down. <laughs> oh, I took I took an ecstasy pill a couple hours ago, and guess what? Uh, no. Oh really? I've I've never tried yeah. that. I I've, I've had a couple friends that do it all the time, but I watched a couple commercials when I was a kid. And scared the fuck out of me, so I've never even tried well, it. Well, uh, like dope, dope is something that you know what I could probably handle, um, but it's just something that I don't not interested in. Talking about it's like dope? I could probably handle alcohol, but I don't really find an interest in it. Psychedelics and MDMA or ecstasy. Uh, marijuana and then poppers is about it for me. But I haven't been able to get my hands on like eight, eight or nine months ago. I was able to trip. Someone got me some weak soft acid that, you know, it, it actually had an effect on me. It made me feel emotional, connected to the universe, and it, it, it led to better things and better healing, uh, you know, over time. You, say, you know, which is you say it was stuff weak? I've been reading about. You 
say it was weak. I think you may have got a hold of some LSA, which is a derivative of LSD. It's like not the full product. Uh, like it's missing the diethylamine part, but it still uh -huh. gets you kind of like. Yeah, it wasn't not as like not I as intense visual. Like okay, so I've taken it LSA a couple times, and it's uh, it gives you some visuals, but it's more hazy and fuzzy than clear, and it doesn't give you that. I don't know if you've ever heard the word grizz, but it's like that that feeling that makes you want to shudder and kind of feel uneasy, and you kind of like uh, like chewing on foil, but you know what I mean. Like it's like a weird feeling you get i don't know if you know what i'm talking about but like an ominous feeling i i i i try you know, to have a positive I'm saying like that body like that bodily feeling where you can almost taste metal or something uh when you're on really strong acid i don't know if you've I, ever it's been a while since i've had really strong acid like the last yeah, like time I your tripped, teeth like and... doom 3 was coming out when did doom 3 come out because that was like the last time i tripped hard uh let me it's... let me it's been a good five, three. seven years. Oh, it was around 2004, 2005 oh, that I last tripped yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got some weak sauce acid and it did help, but it's like I still need some healing and I'm trying to do this shit on my own. And I mean, I could be assisted with drugs and that's that there's a positive aspect to drugs, but then I can never get anything. Like the two times, like, this was the second time I bought some supposed uh, ecstasy in fucking Colorado, and they didn't do a goddamn thing for me either time. And the first time was in 2014, and the second time was just recently. And it's like, fuck, I just, I, I would like to heal. I've been going through a lot of bullshit and a lot of trauma and a lot of abuse, and just like my local sex club decides to fucking abuse me too. It was no big deal. And uh, it, it's like, it's, it, it does take its emotional toll on me and I'm a loner I don't have many people to like reach out to so I'm trying to you know go a drug route and I could use some psychedelics or some yeah it, 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 it's like I bitched the other day it's like they're sending random people to my house wouldn't it be nice if they sent me some psychedelics instead you know fuck some random guy with a pouch full of psychedelics. I got mushrooms I got a well just mail it to me fuck it don't, don't put your you know I mean you don't want to mail it to me, all right. But if they have my address and everything, you know, they could do something nice for a change. But it's like, I don't I don't even know if I would even trust that, though. Like, I would fucking stare at it for, like, weeks, probably, you know. <laughs> like, see if I could get, like, a rat poison tester or some shit, you know. And, you know, like, see if I could perform some tests on it to, you know, make sure... But yeah, it's just like, like there's all these people like going, you know, um, in the groups on Fet Life. They're like, oh, we're looking to party and everything, which usually means dope. And I just made friends with somebody and they actually do dope too. And they didn't turn into a monster though when they were on it. So, which is something that I'm usually used to experiencing the monster aspect. I went from one trap house to another trap house to another trap house and it was like, before I moved in a vehicle, and and, uh, and so I'm, I'm I'm used to the monster version. Speaking of which, well, coke I is told you coke is like it, a alcohol on steroids, and it basically just brings out the monster inside of you. So if you're if that well, no, person doesn't Matt, have that side to them, if they're just laid back and cool, it just it's kind of just uh, amp for their laid backness. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, okay, here, yeah, I'm going to tell you about this recent experience I had. So I, you know, am hanging out with this person that, you know, and she's trans and she does tattoos and she's like really cool and down to earth and chill and everything. And, and, and she had done some mess around me and she offered me some and I was like, no, I'm okay. And um, I, I don't know if that's like being too square or whatever, but like if you have some acid or a psychedelic or some ecstasy, I would totally get down on that. Right. But you're not offering that. So I'm just like, no. But, um, but she didn't turn into a monster. She was she, she was kind of acting like a crackhead. All right. But she was like fixing a speaker and everything. And she was painting it and gluing shit back together. And she was being productive and it like got me to 
thinking like like I've been wanting to work on my invention but you know it'd be nice like to hang out with someone while doing that you know we could just both work on our projects and chill she smokes weed too so I'll just you know make sure to bring some so it's, and um it sounds like to me that she may be a little ADD or ADHD and it helps because well, that's, uh, it's just like what is it Adderall or whatever the fuck it is where it helps Ritalin Ritalin where it's basically meth and it help it helps you focus better so well here yeah I'm getting I'm not done with the story here okay. so Sorry about she, that. she 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 gets in no 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 you're okay you're okay um she gets into like like she had some DMT on her but it was like the form that was like meth form and everything so I need to smoke it out of a fucking bubble um, you know, so I was like a little sketchy about it. I felt, I felt like, you know, like, oh my God, you know, but then I got into thinking, you know, like it's been eight or nine years since I last take, took Ritalin and I used to actually function much better on it. Um, and, um, um, anyway, so I, try, she's like, I got a little bit of DMT, but I mean, I have some more, but I'm trying to save it for a special occasion. And I'm like, okay, well. You, you know, she's like, well, there's some like resonated DMT in the in the bubble here, so I fucking take one hit off this thing, you know, and then I I clear it like you know like ten or twenty seconds later, there was still a little bit in there, so I cleared it out, and um, I kind of got like a little visual. There was probably some meth residue in there that so too, but I immediately kind of like became even more calm instead of like bouncing around and constantly playing with the dog. I uh, I was kind of a little more chilled out, but too much of that shit, and it will fucking send me into like a manic, fucking like rage or whatever. Yeah. So I think I got. I, I'm kind of saying like I did like a little bit of DMT, but I think there was some meth residue on there too. So, you know, um, even though she handed me a different piece than what she was smoking the meth out of, she handed me a different one. Um, I, there was probably some meth residue on there because the calming nature, you know, where I immediately became more chill, um, uh, was a little suspect, you know. So what you're saying is you may have ADHD and it might help you to have some, like, so you say you were on Ritalin. Oh, dude, I do have ADHD. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, like so the last two years of high school, that I makes went a lot of like, sense, anti-science though. thing. That makes a ton of sense because I feel like everybody who I've ever heard that had ADHD or ADD or whatever it's called uh, is, is like, that's helped them at, at least to some extent. Anyways. Oh yeah, too much is too much. Like he's yeah, like yeah. too much Ritalin or too much Adderall. Like I couldn't even fucking sleep on Adderall. They tried giving me that when I was a kid, and I like didn't sleep for like three days. So they like put me back on like Ritalin or the generic version, and I was doing fine. And I went through an anti-science phase during my junior and senior year of high school, and that's when I kind of stopped taking Ritalin, and then my like grades were, like really dipped. Um, during those last two years, but I, I wasn't like held back or anything. It was just, um, you know, like like an F here, a couple D's there, a little more C's, a little less B's. You think you, you were know. anti-science because you felt the way you felt? Well, I was like, I was like, look, I'm going to do this all natural and everything, and uh, you know, other people's propaganda and pseudoscience was, you know, kind of, you know, make me think. Like, dude, like a few years after that, I was looking into psychic vampires from like the the, the satanic Bible and everything. Cause I was like trying to figure out like why people were so like evil and malicious and everything. So like, I, I kind of explored a lot of things, you know, in my, my younger years. Hey, I can't say shit. I, I used to sit around with a buddy and read from the Necronomicon and we would do spells with black candles in the dark with a circle around us and shit like that. So... I mean, and I didn't believe in any of it at all, not even a little bit. And it's it, to me, it was just playing along, but it was something fun to do and like yeah. watch, observing others and their like rituals and stuff like that. And, and well, hanging out with your friends too, probably. Well, yeah, you I know, mean, like, they were all they friends were, and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, all of my friends had some quirky thing. I, I'm sure I had something that I was into that they were like. Fucking weird, weird shit. But whatever. But 
I think I had both those books, the Necronomicon and the Tanner Bible. And I was going to, back in the day, I was going to make some like YouTube videos, like doing like a quote or two, like a sentence or two quote that like, you know, sounds really positive and upbeat in it. It does have a good message, but it was like, and then I'm like, then I give the reference at the end, like where it was from. You know, and then people are like, oh shit. You know, because I, I was like, you know, early YouTube had a lot of atheist shit and I, that's kind of like where my mind was. I, I'm like, I should talk about this too. You know, and yeah, I, I never I, really I, jumped. I wish I wasn't man. so busy back then because I had a lot of shit to say and I did start a channel uh, right when YouTube first came out. I started a channel and then I made a video, uh, I made a music video about the Raiders and yeah. uh, somebody like some Raiders fan, some like 14 year old Raiders fan loved it so much. They put some kind of bot pirate bot on it and it made it, uh -huh. anything anybody typed into Google was sent to that somehow so like everybody within a certain area like millions of people were sent to that no matter what they could type the and it would send you to my video and i got i got <laughs> slapped down for it so i was like well if that's the way it's gonna be fuck youtube so i didn't fuck with it for like 10 years and then i got back into it Yeah, I know how it is when you when you're done wrong. Even even if you're you're doing wrong yourself, you know, and that's kind of maybe you know some something to understand with these uh, voodoo cult members. Uh, you know, when I come at them, you know, I thought I come at them, you know, like very professionally and like an adult. You know, I, I know I could be wordy. It's my ADHD. Like I put this on my Twitter profile, like my ADHD and personality type. And there could be problems with the Myers-Briggs 16 personalities, but it has been so insightful. Like, you know, it has explained like why I even do things, you know, and to not feel ashamed about it. Like, like I, I like my alone time, but I don't like being like totally lonely either. You know, like it's, it's a nice balancing act. And I was always like that as a child. Um, even though I would occupy my time back in the day, like with video games or whatever, I just, I gotta have that alone time to kind of help me process everything. And like back, like earlier, like, like a year ago this time, I didn't understand that about myself. And, you know, I would think that it, it was like something wrong with me. Like, like, oh man, you know, this is like, like. I always want to be left alone. Like, mean, meanwhile, that's a know, sign I'm, of intelligence. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, it's not necessarily intelligence, but dude, like, I, I suck at real time talking. Like, I guess I'm doing a good job now, but, uh, you know, it's just, uh, people well, could trip me up if they wanted to. If they're really savvy enough, they could trip me up in real time. Intelligence and, doesn't um, mean, like, remembering everything or, uh, being able to, like, quote, well, formulas or being able to do math problems really fast in your head it's the ability to well, yeah. think and to reason and to rationalize things so most people are horrible at all those things shit, what's that it takes me a while to process yeah shit. like but, sometimes like it takes me days to like or weeks to process things like my dad's death i think it took like a year for me to like fully process that like everybody it has like a, a long different time. Uh, different processing time so, and and I think that more intelligent people dwell on things a lot more because there's so many more thoughts going through their head about that thing and it's, and it's hard to let certain things go because you don't want to let go of your whoever you know what I'm saying you don't want to Oh, you don't want to forget that thought or that person or, you know, that idea or that memory or that moment. You know what I'm saying? So people that ha don't have a whole lot going on, that's just gone. You know what I'm saying? So. Damn, I was going to end and try to end on a like a really good point. But then I just had a, a like, you know, brain fart. And I'm like, that's a really good point. And then I let you finish. And then I'm like, sir. <laughs> Uh, I mean, but it is just to remind you, it's been about 90 minutes, so I don't know if you want to, you know, go make yourself a sandwich, use the bathroom. Um, yeah, and we'll, then, uh, or, or we could continue, you know, talking. I, I don't, 
Uh, I don't really need a break right now. I feel good. Well, I am kind of hungry, so maybe you want to do like a 20-minute break? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that's straight, man. Uh, oh, and then uh, time to eat something. I'll try to remember that good point that I was going to make. No, although I, I mean, uh, I like remember it when we would like say goodbye, you know, for the for the whole day, you know, like see you next time, you know, and then like twenty minutes later it'll be like, oh shit, I was gonna say that. I know, I, <laughs> I get your text. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah, this. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to do that because I I, uh, I always think about shit. It's like, no biggie it, because you know, like it it just reminds me that there's still more to talk about and that it gives me ideas for other shit too. Anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, thank you for your idea of like it was straight up your idea, like uh, filing the false, filing the restraining order against him after filing, after he filed a false restraining order against me. Like, I, I rejected that idea at first. I'm like, nah, man, this sounds like a defamation thing. But then, like now, I feel angry. You know, I have that anger emotion in there, like like a little more so, like because like he tried jailing me and bringing violence and taking freedoms away from me for just wanting to be heard. Like, just blows my mind. Blows my mind. Like, this dude cares about abuse victims? Well, not from my perspective, from where I'm standing here. All right? You know, so I guess I could end on that. Well, uh, that, that reminds me of a thing where when someone tells you who they are, it's usually not who they are. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I judge people by their actions, right. not like you know, like what they 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 say. And it's like I think it's a learned skill that has taken me some time to learn. I mean, if, <laughs> if they say I'm a philanthropist and then they give a hundred thousand dollars to an orphanage, then yeah, that's probably it. They say uh, I'm great with kids, and then you find out they have fucking like three charges for like abusing children or something. It's like. Or neglect you didn't, or whatever. Whatever, yeah. You didn't think someone was going to fucking find that out, asshole? You know, it's like... And then someone always fucking finds out, you know, so... Oh, well, I'm into... I mean, I'm into forgiveness, and people screw up, and there was a lot of people that Kamala Harris fucked in California, I think, with, like, the child neglect, because their parents couldn't, like, take them to school or something like that, so they, they hung out at the house or back you know, at mom, mommy or daddy's uh, employment or something like that. I forget the exact details. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's, uh... Yeah, you, so the, and there's plenty of people with bullshit charges. We always got to take any sort of charge with a grain of salt, you know, um, or a few grains of salt because, you know, there, there, there's a lot of bullshit records out there and we got to understand that some... And, and people are allowed to make mistakes. Like, okay, you sh- uh, 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 Rev and, and Shani, which I haven't really heard much about because I haven't been watching like the Geek Room or anything like Fuck My Life or Miss Parker um, these past few months. So, but th- th- they're shitty people. When I last knew them, they, they they're still redeemable. You know, there's still some redemption to be had. I think you know if they just change their path, and I would give them recognition. And praise for changing their ways. Right. Like, any man, any that, real genuine change that, in a person is is it's grateful to it's good to be grateful of them for that. Uh, and we do have to forgive people for being shitty people because I was a piece of fucking shit. And you know yeah, you might have considered yourself that important way. Too. Right. Yes. And that way they know that hey they're fucking up and they gotta fix it. But if nobody says hey you're fucking up you gotta fix it or they can't say to themselves hey I'm fucking up I gotta fix me then nothing's ever gonna change. And I noticed the path yeah. I was going on and I was you know like I'm I this isn't who I am. This is me wanting to be like others, and I can't just be like that because it's bothering me to be this way. So I have to be who I am, you know, so I can totally understand that mentality. It it was a similar thought for me, but it's not, not that I wanted to be like others. It was others were making me into something that I wasn't. That's what I'm saying. Like, I was being influenced and not totally influenced but some of the influence made me make decisions that i wouldn't have normally made under other circumstances 
and then yeah. me noticing like wow i'm kind of really being the, sh the people who i'm telling they need to fucking stop doing this shit and straighten up i'm doing that shit so i yeah like you said i'm being a hypocrite and i can't do that yeah i i make mistakes i fucking say shit and you know sometimes it's misconstrued as something or another or whatever and sometimes i mean it and then fucking i realize oh i you know i was being a shitty person and then i changed my mind about how i feel about that because i recognize that it you know it makes people uncomfortable or it makes people feel bad or whatever it may be and or like i feel like sometimes i single out group like earlier i was talking about well, this is the way women argue. Not all women argue like that, but the women in my oh, yeah, life know, that I've argued with have argued like that. Uh, well, so, you use Meta as an example. You're like, right. you've heard the saying, you know, before, you know, so I knew what you were, you, you didn't strike me say that. Well, I know, I'm just, just, I'm just using that as an example that I, sometimes I generalize, I generalize a lot, actually. I, I normally generalize when... You have conversations? What? Well, yeah, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just you know it's it's easy to get caught up in you know without saying specifically i know not all of this certain group are like this or maybe even not a majority but some and it's hard it's hard to catch yourself and say uh oh, i never do that instead of saying i i try not to do that or you know i think of myself as a person who doesn't do that but you know we all make mistakes we all slip up we all you know stumble here and there but as long as we're catching ourselves and, you know working on it uh as long as we're not just completely yeah. fucking people over left and, and right then, and and if you, know, you continue being people. a shitty person like shanny and rev then you deserve to the ridicule right and, you know to be yeah. fun at you know like you know, just kind of like I'm doing with this fucking douchebag at Voodoo. Like, I'm going to go on dates with a cardboard fucking cutout of this guy. Like, and I'm totally not going to make out with that cardboard cutout, you know, unless <laughs> unless he puts his hand on my inner hip. Make sure you get his consent hip. first, though. I was thinking just doing his face, but also, but also like have a hot woman body, but like like in a bikini or something. So That's like, awesome. you know, I don't need to like. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I think I'm about uh, famished, so I'm gonna have to take a break. I here, totally. But, uh, we'll yeah, take a break. Get back um, on this in 20 minutes. So. Parking at court is something I actually try to do, but I couldn't. I, I, it, my efforts proved unsuccessful. And maybe you could remind me about this when we jump back. What was that? Um, actually, I got a little sticky note. You said something. I, about... I was trying to fart. Oh, at fart the at court, court appearance. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk all about <laughs> fart in that court because that sounds fucking uh, hilarious. It, it, well, yeah, I tried, but um, uh, okay, so yeah, some courtroom ideas remind me about, and then I was dealing with fucking blood clot also like last month in my right arm, so I had one in my right leg for a few years, and now I have one in my right arm, so it's like you know, and I was dealing with that. Um, yeah. Anyway. All right. I'll. I'll text you in about 20 minutes and then we'll restart all right see talk to you all right bye bye